Hello, and thank you for joining me for this quick video covering the public QR feature. This feature was designed to let users create a tag which can be scanned by a member of the general public. Since users have the option to create their own public QR templates, the uses have no bounds. Is this a shared asset and you need a quick way for anyone to access a URL for instructions? Maybe the tag will have the owner's contact information in case the item is misplaced. We'll start off by selecting the Reports icon and choosing Public QR here from the bottom. To print out existing system tags, simply select the QR type from the QR type dropdown. This will populate a list to select from. Just select the box for any entry that is needed, or the users also have the option to select everything on the page or everything on every page, or search as they see fit. Once everything's been selected, go ahead and hit print. In the new pop-up window, hit the print menu, and from here, select the printer that you need. Depending on which destination you choose, will allow you to select the particular size that you need. From there, it's recommended to use the scale to paper option to ensure that it's going to fit on the proper size. To generate a new public QR template, click on add QR code label. In step one, give the label a name, one that'll be easy to recognize. After the name, select the type. The type will control the data that's gonna be available for you to select from in step two. Once you've selected that, scroll through the list here to make sure that the data that you're looking for is available. Once you have your type selected, next comes a couple options here. Create as URL will do just what it says. It'll create a URL and place that inside the QR label. When a user scans that code, it'll take them to a website that'll have the content that you have selected. This way, you can make a tag that'll be compatible with any app being used. Specifically, it'll make it compatible with iPhone and iPad's default camera app instead of requiring those users to utilize a specialized scanner app. Next, we're gonna select the size. This can either be a custom size or a standard pre-existing size. If it's pre-existing, simply select it from the list. If you'd like to do a custom, select the checkbox, and then from there, put in the width and the height of the label. For the next step, the asset number, since I have asset as the type, has been pre-filled in for me. And from here, I just need to select the additional details to show. Selecting from the list can be done one at a time, or if you'd like, you can hold Control or even Shift to be able to select multiple at the same time. The single arrows will move over whatever has been selected. The double arrows will move over the entire list. The up and down arrows here will allow the user to determine the order of the fields. In step three, we're gonna be choosing how the user will select which codes to print. Now, typically this is going to be associated directly to the type. However, if I were to say, change this to model. Then when I selected this QR code option, I wouldn't be presented with a list of assets. I would be presented with a list of models. And when I selected a particular model, it would then produce a label for each asset of that model. Now for our case, I am gonna keep it back to asset here. And then step four, this is a standard preview. The preview is a fully scannable preview. At this point, you can scan it and make sure that it has the appropriate data that you need in there. Rearrange the order that it appears in if needed as well. Once everything is set, go ahead and hit finish if you're happy with how everything is. If you'd like to create a new one, use save a new, or if you would like to edit the content of the template, not the content of the label itself, but how it shows up on the tag or positioned within the label, then use save and edit. There's an option to edit this afterwards, and we're gonna go through that too. And now that it's complete, we'll be able to select the public QR. It'll always be here towards the bottom of the list with the other customs. 
select the assets that are required, and from there, hit print. Unlike the previous options where it was a pre-existing, in this one, I've predetermined the size of the label, so it's populating just that for me. You may notice that it's off-centered. It's not laid out properly within the label, so let's go ahead and adjust that. For us, we'll be going in and adjusting the label format. This will open up the standard editor. Everything here can be drag and dropped, and sizing is automatic. From there, be able to go through, relocate anything that you'd need to. Use any of the existing data that you've put in here, like the actual model code that's in the system, or even the asset number if you prefer. There are options to modify the font size, and even just come in and put any specific text or images that you'd like as well. Whenever you're done, make sure to hit the diskette here in the corner to save. It'll always save under report.mrt, so you never need to change this. If at any point you'd like to go back and modify the contents of the QR code, maybe it should have something different, or we've added extra fields we'd like to add into that template. That's fine, and that's what the edit label content will do. It'll reopen the wizard and allow the user to go through and make any changes or modifications they see fit. Whether that's as simple as coming in here and adjusting the position within there, or even go and change the filter by option. Now, once all the changes have been made, again, don't forget to hit finish to save and finalize that label format and make it available for use. That covers it for the public QR function. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to check back for any new updates.